Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and in this tutorial we're going to continue with our annotation panel. So for beginners how we can use then our annotation panel to measure stuff to place text annotation meaning dimensions table leaders and all those kind of stuff so that whoever you are drawing a drawing for they can understand what information you are trying to communicate with the person that is reading your drawing. So without further ado guys, let us get into this video. Come back guys. Now when you are using your annotation, it is very necessary that you set these values correctly. F to be able to set these things correctly, I would suggest you watch my tutorials in um, AutoCAD Basics tutorials that I have a playlist of, and I will link this up above. So you can either, so this tutorial is just to show you how to use those annotation, but in order to have those annotations to be able to use, you have to set them up first. So it's kind of strange to show you how to use something when we have, haven't set up anything as yet. But um, in this video, I'm focusing on how to use them, whereas how to set them up. So if you want to learn how to set them up, you can watch this video first and see how you use them. But then before you even use your annotation, it will be great to set them up correctly. And for that, I will link the video up above like right now. So let us move into how to use your annotation for the real beginners using AutoCAD. So first of all, we have a text annotation. So put in text in your drawing. And AutoCAD, first of all, starts with your standard text, if you have not set up anything as yet. And the standard text, we have our multi-line text, meaning you can press enter and it will enter our next new line within that one text, or a single line text. Let's start with our multi-line text. It asks us to specify the first corner of our text. And of course the second corner or you can type in then the height um, or the width but let us start with just clicking next for the opposite corner and what it will do is it will start to ask you what text do you want to fill in so let us just type text and in this text we can see that the height is 2.5, your text height is 2.5. It is a text style standard. It is not annotative. And here you can choose your text or your font uh, for your text, the layer that your text is under, and justification is is it top left top center basically how your text is justified so here we can see it changes it automatically as we select a different um, justification and it adds uh, bullets to your numbers or numbers bullet or letters meaning let's see lowercase letter a b c or uppercase letter same way and of course you can then start or continue basically like Excel if you want your numbering to continue for where you left off then you have your line spacing between the text and of course where you place your text it is um, left center or right or justified basically justification or distributed between a certain length. Let's see what else we have here and combine paragraph, meaning if you have two paragraphs, you can combine the two. And you can also decide to add columns if you want to 
have a whole leap of text. Add symbols to your text that you do not have on your keyboard. Uh, fields. Fields is handy for when you're filling in automatic stuff like the date. Let's see what else we have here. Our um, dictionary. So it checks your spelling. And you replace text. Basically like how you would use Excel or Words or any other program. It has the same, more or less the same basic information. So now we draw our first text and here we have our multi text. And as I explained, the multi text is that if you press enter, it add more lines and you can then continue typing. Then you have one block of text. So you can change the length or you have single line text, which is the length. And then if I type text and here is the same way. It's just that since I added the height by just clicking instead of it being 2.5, like the other one, here you can just change it to five. The same you can do for this, this text right here. You can now here in your properties, you can change your text to a different height if you like. So, but mainly I will suggest using your multi-line text because this one has more options that you can edit your text. Whereas this one, if you double click, as you can see here, we don't have any more options is, is it is like basically how to explain. I think that AutoCAD first started with this single line text and then they added a multi line text and just left the single line text so people could still use it. But if you have more option with this text, why would you use the single line text still? So that is why I would say in my experience, a single line text is not really very useful anymore in AutoCAD. So that was your text. And now let us go into our, or oh, before we go into our, um, dimensions, there is, a. let's see annotation here, the annotation tab relates to this tab right here. So this is basically like your, how to explain it, like your, um, easy tab, like our short menu tab to this tab right here, which is, has more options. So it's the same thing. Does this one has it more basic, more information, more stuff you can do without having to, and this one is just like a fast express panel to this one. So here, instead of us having everything cramped up in one panel here in your annotation tab, you will find the same stuff we find in our annotation panel, but just that here we have more options that we can choose from. So like your textile. So here we can select our textile without having to first draw the text and then selecting the text. And also you have different text height that you can choose from without, um, before you even draw your text. So these things you can select it for hand like this one, standard text. And, um, let's say if you want to scale your text and then you draw your multi-line text based on that information. So if I select it, as you can see, it is 2.5 and I can change it to 1.5 or 15. Oops. Basically here we can, sorry, you have to cl double click inside your text and then select your text and then you can change it to the height you want. You cannot change it directly, unfortunately. So that's why it's sometimes handy to set it first and then you draw 
because then it is set already to the size you want it to be and the textile that you want it to have. And you can, of course, add multiple uh, textile in your textile manager. And that is in the video that I mentioned earlier that you can use to make these textiles. So now we will move on with our dimensions. That is the same thing we have right here, dimensions. So here in our dimensions, we have our uh, dimensions. First of all, let us draw a rectangle to be able to add our dimension to something. Now this one dimension, this dimension symbol right here, it just dimension everything. So if you do angle dimension or straight dimension or vertical or horizontal, it will adapt to whatever you, you are measuring or setting a dimension to. But then you have your linear dimension and this one just dimensions horizontally or vertically. It does not dimension in angle. It just stay straight. So how you dimension, select your first point and then your second point and then drag it up or down and then click one more time and it will enter that dimension. That is how we use our dimension. Let us see. And then here we have our angle dimension. So whereas the first one was a straight dimension here, we can just do either straight ones or angled ones. So this one has more or less the same function as this one right here. It's just that this one right here, we can also dimension circles. It will adapt to whatever dimension you, whatever object you are trying to dimension. It will think for you basically. Whereas here, you would have to choose the one you are looking for and then add it to it. So here we can do an angular dimension, but then it will show me this instead of showing me this. So these are two, the same distance, but whereas the other one was just showing me the distance, here we can see that it is a diameter with a diameter symbol in front of it. You can also still use this one and measure the circle and just bring it down. And then if you double click into my text, it's going to select my dimension. And then you can just add the symbol for diameter. Let's see, where is my dam? Oh, right here. So percent percent C, small C by the way, is diameter. So just like how we had this one right here, you can also add it like this. And if you by mistake deleted your text, you can also say, well, this is 35. That's our text override. So here, if you go in your properties and you go on text override, that is 35. Whereas the actual measurement is 34.1753. So here, it this is an override. Now, if we do the percent percent C space and then do brackets, these uh, rectangle bracket or triangular brackets, then we press enter. What it will do is it is going to those brackets does us um, represent the value. So basically the measurement value. And then I would add, of course, different text if you want to, let's say, well, this is my diameter then it will say diameter and then the size, or this is my, where is it again? The text override right here. This is my circle. So sometimes it is necessary to add text to your dimension. 
then is when the text override come in handy. The only thing is to be able to show the size, it will be handy to then put the brackets afterwards or before or wherever in the middle you want to show the person, well, these is millimeters and this is what basically the information you are showing right now. Of course, without spacing in between, it will be handy. Space. And here we have it. So that way you can add more information to your dimensions without having to explode them or add a separate text. Because now if I decide to lengthen this one to here, the text um, automatically adds the correct measurements from for this dimension without um, my text being deleted or moved for whatever reason, instead of adding a bunch of loose text. So that is the correct way how to draw in AutoCAD to save you time. Believe me, save you time, especially when you have to go back and change stuff. Like if we did do this the other way and add in text, like just a simple text right here, if I move this dimension and bring it this way, then my text will be here instead of continue, uh, my text being in front of the, the, the size that I, where I want it to be, basically, if you could follow. Now we have our angular and our angular dimension is basically an angle. You select two lines and then you have your angle of your two lines and then you can then the same way how the override works you can add where is text override here extra information if you decide to add extra information we have the arc length so here we have we need a force arc first let us just draw arc it doesn't really matter and the arc length is basically the length of that arc. So this symbol is the arc length. And here we have the radius. R for radius. So by using the right dimensions, it adds the correct symbol for the person who is reading the drawing, especially when it comes to dimensions. Those extra information just makes a difference. When you are reading a drawing with so much measurements, that extra information helps for the person to see. As you can see here, we have again the dimension, diameter. This symbol represents diameter for this, um, this circle. Now we have here ordinate, creates ordinate dimensions so basically dimensions in the x value and the y value so let's see let's start this let's specify the feature location um here okay so basically this is the length of this line right here so instead of just um adding uh the Let's see, this is the length of this right here. I guess that's the length of the whole. So this is the vertex. Okay, so basically this is the location of that point. That is what it is showing right there. It is showing me the location of that point. So here we can see the location of this point. measurement so the um, x vertex is here and the y vertex so it's basically the vertex line it is showing me the vertex location in the x and the y direction so if I select this line right here, it is showing me the oh, why is 
is it? Such a big difference from there. So here we have our um let us see. Sorry guys, I don't use this much, but creates a ordinate dimension. So ordinate dimensions are exactly what? Oh, okay. So it basically shows me the point that we are selecting right now from the origin. So from the origin, it is 320 millimeters that way. And if we select it here, it is 324, 34 millimeters that way from the zero point, basically. So this has also a different point from the origin. So based on your origin, it adds up. So even though this is not 200 and, um, 69 millimeters. This is 269 millimeters from the origin point, basically. So this is this mostly measures just a point of a specific whatever point you selected it. It just tells you where the point is located in your drawing. So in your um, model space, because remember each and every point in your model space has a location or a coordinate. So that is basically your coordinate from the origin where it's located. Now let us see, we have a jagged edge. So now here, this is the jagged edge. Specify the center location. Yeah, so this is just this type of dimension. A jagged, a jog so that it has an extra line in it. It just looks a little better. You can then move this line a little more to the left or to the right to make it look a little um, more informative if you like. Just basically a jagged edge, a jagged um, radius. It is showing me the radius. Now that was it for our dimensions. And now we will move on to our leaders. So we had our text, our dimensions, and now our leaders is the same thing we have right here. So our text, our dimensions, and then our leaders. And what are leaders? Leaders are just basically um, text with a line to show your information, to show the customer the information. By the way, here, as I said here, we have more options. So this is a quick dimension and quick dimension here. We can see that it just adds a quick dimension to this line since I selected that line. And continuous dimension is a dimension continuing from this part. So it will continue to draw the dimension as every point that you cl select. And we also have a base point dimension. Where is it? The base point. The break dimension, break is breaks uh, dimensions from um, each other. So if you have overlapping dimension, the break dimension breaks one of the dimensions so that it shows neatly on your drawing. Oh, right here, baseline dimension, that is it. So here your baseline dimension is, select your base dimension, that is this one right here. And what it will do is it will add a dimension for every line, instead of continuing, it adds a new dimension continuing continuously. And of course, when you have your base dimension, you have to then select your, let's see how, oh yeah, this is, this information is within your dimension style. So that is your base dimension, your continuous dimension. And let's see, here you have adjust the spacing between your dimension. You see how these dimensions two up under each other. So let us say this is your base dimension. And then select dimensions to space, these three, enter. And then the value, the space in between it, let's just select. Let us 
make it um, 10 and now it spaces my dimensions 10 millimeters from each other that is um, very handy then we have what is this oblique makes an extension line from the dimension line uh, oh it adds a angle to my dimension line so select the object okay the angle let us say 60 degrees and as you can see it angles that dimension line text angle from the dimension line it speaks for itself and here we have to justify the text so you can then justify your text so that it may go to the left or to the right so like to move the text to the left or to the right to the center or to the right and overwrite text as i showed you in you can then enter dimension value name or override clear so let's say 10 millimeters This is basically your override your text right here. It's the same thing, text override, instead of having to do it that way. Let us see, update your dimension and inspect your dimension. So this is your inspection, then it will show that way, 10 and 50%. This is more specific for certain, um, and here we have a jagged, a dimension jug line. So when you break your, um, make a break in your drawing this helps so that it will continue it has it says that this is a break so ba how to explain it so this is just a line let me see if i can show you what this is so specify the jagged location right here and here we can see it adds a jagged location meaning that the the wall is cut off in my paper space. Okay, association means that sometimes when you have a draw and you move this line, it does not continue. As you can see, it does not move with my text. But then you can associate it. So select the object that you want to associate it with this dimension right here and then select the object you want to associate it with right here let me see why isn't specify the first extension line origin right here right here second line extension line origin oh right here let us see if this works no it does not why not Okay, so here we can see it is not associated, obviously. It is not associated to this one. So spec specify first extension line origin or select object. And now it has selected this object. So now let's see if it helps. Yes, it works properly. So you basically associate this dimension to this circle. So every time I make the circle bigger, it goes with the circle. It's the same way like my, let us see, this one right here, enter. It is not associated on this corner, 
so we have to select the object right here so now it is associated so if I make it bigger it goes with the line and if I make it smaller it goes with a line this is very handy because let's say if you are stretching your box then you don't have to then stretch your dimension it goes together with each other and that was it for that dimensions now we have your leaders and your leaders are very straightforward. You select a leader and specify the leader arrow location. That is the head of your arrow. It is now very small because I have, you haven't set your right there. And then you can choose now the location of your landing. So the beginning of your landing, right that corner right there. And then the landing will always be always be horizontal unless you change the and the justification is um, right now set to center uh, middle left so middle of the top line or you can do middle bottom of the top line or under the on the line the top line and basically the top line is your first line of text you can then have a second line of text and it will just underline the first line of text and there you can change um, to multiple different attachments from the left and from the right depending on what you have because if I move my text let's see move my text to the other side it will be now attached to the right instead of to the left of the landing and here it may have a different value as you can see this one has that side middle of text and if I put it to that side it has underlying text so depending on the side it is on it will change and also here you select the dimension the multi um, multi leader size or the style here you can add um, let me see multiple leaders you can add more leaders enter if you want to leader multiple stuff or you can align your leaders with each other let's say if i have a different leader right here and of course the text is further away you can then al align it so select the multiple leaders enter space and then select the multiple leader to align to and then as you can see it aligns it to this one what does this does collect organize okay so basically if you have multiple leaders instead of having each and every leader show one 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 what this does is collect all the leaders and add them to one long leader. So here we have um, select the multiple leader, enter. Sorry, we have to select them all. So this one, why this one was filtered out? I guess because this one has multiple leaders. So you can also remove these from it press enter and now I guess it will work oh I guess I, I know why because it does not has those little balls next to it so to be able to use this option you would need um, those um, they, they are called like let me see if I have the option right here to change it. Mm. So instead of having a text like those little balls. And here we can have the vertical or the horizontal text 
but to do this one we would have to use one of our styles that we don't have right now but next that uh, but if you go into your um if you do the tutorial for the textile then you add more textiles then you can use this option and what it does as you can see it collects all the little balls and it just add them to each other they'd add them together into one long uh, one two three instead of having all separate balls now we have last but not least our table yes our table and these we had already the revision we did this one already so we will not discuss this one in this video this one was discussed in the first video from our draw which is also the cloud and the wipeout so last and not least is the same way is our table and when you click on the table here you can select the style here you can set how much um, columns you need how much rows the width of the column and the height of the rows that you would like and or you can just specify the insertion point with this information or you can just say draw a window or square or rectangle and then it will calculate it for you the amount of uh, rows you need you can also insert a table from uh, data links so meaning uh, excel um, excel document or you can from object data in the drawing itself so a data extraction you can add a table but in this example we will just do this one and we will just do a window and basically click and here we can then specify the direction and here you can fill in your text however you want it to be and you can download one from a source to create a data link use data link commands but these right here i explain more in detail these are more advanced stuff like drawing a table is very easy but these right here are data linking and for or extract data or linking your data for these i would suggest watching my video that i have about extracting data from your drawing this is more an advanced option. You don't really need it when you're drawing, but more to give information for the person who is reading your drawing. So for this one, I will link the video up above. So guys, that was it for the annotation panel. And I will see you in my next video for how you use your layers within your drawing. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now, guys. Thank you.